Bikes come in all sorts of weird and wacky shapes and sizes. So coming up are the most extreme bikes the world has seen. Our list features the lightest, the most illegalist, the most fastestest, and the most powerfulest. You get how you get the idea. But we're gonna start off with the smallest. Before we do though, if you enjoy these kind of videos and you like the content we do, then well, why not give this video a thumbs up? Helps us in the algorithm, helps support the channel. I don't know how that works or really what that means, but um, it's just what some nerdy person told me. Anyway. This bike is just 8.4 centimeters tall and was ridden by Sergei Dushevsky in Moscow, Russia. And whilst it's a record breaker in one sense, you're certainly not gonna be going anywhere fast on it. No, he's got some top tips for riding it though which are constant training and a good sense of balance. Makes sense, I guess. Next up is the most expensivest, or expensive if you want to speak correctly, bike. This is the Trek Madone as ridden by Lance Armstrong in the 2009 Tour de France. And it was auctioned off by Sotheby's at their charity auction and it fetched $500,000. Now what made it so expensive was the fact that it was actually painted by the artist, Turner Prize winning artist no less, Damien Hurst, who actually covered the bike in butterfly wings, real butterfly wings, which was well, criticised by sort of animal rights groups who, who deemed that unnecessary and barbaric. Yeah. Um, also, it looked quite good though. Five hundred thousand dollars is probably approximately a hundred times more than its retail price at the time. Mm. Hmm. On to the lightest now, and well, the award goes to the Specialized S Works Athos because, in a size fifty-six, it's the lightest production frame available to humanity. Just five hundred. And 85 grams, which is about the same as six apples or a full of water GCN water bottle. <laughs> this is available a... <laughs> in the GCN shop. <laughs> this is a disc only frame set, and the purists out there will love it because it's got a threaded bottom bracket and an external C clamp. Yeah, quite impressive. There's a disc brake frame as well, isn't it? Very impressive. Cool. Next up is the fastest bicycle in a slipstream. This record is held by Denise muller koronek who achieved an outrageous speed of 296 kilometers per hour on the salt flats of Utah, US now, of A. Now, if you could sustain sort of speeds like that, it would mean you'd complete the average Tour de France stage in just over an hour. Ollie and I are always banging on about how important aero is, and this next bike takes things to the next level. It is, in fact, the fastest human-powered vehicle and requires a mere 198 watts to travel at 90 kilometers an hour. That is ridiculous. What makes this bike so fast is that it's a recumbent and the bike is actually encased in a huge aerodynamic fairing, which has been more specially designed using computational fluid dynamics to be as aero as possible. And to give some context to what that 200 watts means, if you were to ride at 200 watts on a regular sort of shaped upright aero bicycle, well, you'd be looking to average around 30 kilometers per hour. In complete contrast to the lightest production frame, this is the heaviest rideable bicycle. And it's ridden by Antanas Contramus from Lithuania. And this weighs in at 1,385 kilograms. Whoa. That's, that's a lot, isn't it? It looks it's like it's lot. got tractor wheels that appear to have been filled in with concrete. Yeah. And that means that, well, that weight it's 2,367 times heavier than the specialised Athos frame that's the lightest frame. I'm not, Mental. In, not entirely sure why he's wearing a helmet though. Yeah, he's got stabilisers. Yeah, well. bikes are stabilised. Who knows? Safety first. On to the world's tallest bike, and this may come as a surprise, but it's not actually the bike owned by GCN's very own 
Connor Dunn. It's an actual fact of bike ridden by a chap called Adam Zdanovich from Poland. It stands at a whopping 7.4 meters tall. If there's one thing I've learned doing this video is that Eastern Europeans love making extreme bikes. How bizarre. Anyway, the bike itself took around a month to design and plan. However, it only took around three weeks to manufacture this giant contraption. And it kind of does look like a giant Christmas tree, but I'm told it's constructed entirely from recycled materials. I feel the rest of the world needs to like up its game. Yeah, we can't have people ride around on giant Christmas trees claiming world records. Pinarello is the most winningest. Yeah, you can't say winningest. If we say winningest, everyone in the comments goes mental. Most decorated bike or most successful in pro bike races. Pinarello is the most decorated Tour de France bike manufacturer with 15 wins to their name. And I believe the first one came in 1988 by Pedro Delgado. Knowledge. Now it was rumored that during the 80s and early 90s, some of the bikes ridden by Pinarello sponsored teams were actually Pinarellos. But we don't know if this is confirmed or not, or truth or just a myth, but it was a practice that did go on back in the day. On to the most powerful e-bikes now. And although regulations heavily limit the power and the assistance speeds when you're out riding on the road. Only go 25 kilometers per hour head off-road and it's a whole nother thing. You can see crazy contraptions such as this with a 10,000 watt rear hub drive motor. Wowzers. Wowzers, capable of speeds up to 80 kilometers an hour. This thing will eat up Strava segments for breakfast. Yeah, e-bike specific Strava segments though. That is actually a very you good point. Tick the e-bike box. I mean, if this thing does have pedals and a chain, does feel a Bit of a stretch to call it a bike, to be honest, but pretty cool nonetheless. Mm. Let's finish on what I think is the most controversial and most illegal bike the world has seen, the Lotus Type 108. Originally a design concept of Mike Burroughs in the 1980s, but was subsequently developed by Rudy Tommen, a keen cyclist and a Lotus Cars employee. And it was through his work that the bike was subsequently developed and turned into reality. This was a radical design. I remember seeing it as a kid on TV and just thinking it was absolutely incredible. Featured a monoblade fork and was initially designed for the track where it was ridden by Chris Boardman in the 1992 Barcelona Olympics to individual pursuit glory. It, oh, amazing looking thing. What an absolutely iconic bike. Yes, and if you want to find out more information about it, we actually go into more detail about Lotus Bike in a GCM Plus film, which is rather good, um, and compare it with the modern one as well. The track bike was then adapted to road use as well, where it was used in several time trials, and it was actually paired with the Mavic Zap group set, where Chris Boardman used it in prologues of the Tour de France as well, and won races, but ultimately it was, uh, well, it was deemed too fast too radical, so the fun police came along and they banned it, the UCI. They love banning stuff. So there you have it, that's our list of the most weird and wacky and extreme bikes the world has ever seen. But if you think we've missed any bikes off of the list, well make sure you let us know in the comments section down below. And don't forget, share this video far and wide for all your friends to see. Pinarello Sword. Two words. <laughs>